Good morning. morning. It's good to have you here today as we join together to worship. Um, Just a few notes before we begin. Um, There will be a review of annual reports down in the social hall after worship today. So please come. It's a good opportunity to ask questions, clarifications, that type of thing. And, And if we all come, then we can all provide some input. Um, I'd also like to mention that it would be, if you like uh, to to eat subs, that you would order a a Super Sunday sub uh, before January 31st. And um, those will be um, available then on February 3rd. These are a a fundraiser for the youth, youth ministry. And then um, you also notice that we have many beautiful flowers. These are all given in um, memory of Gary Salisbury. At this time, I'm going to call on Julie Forderer, who has some words of wisdom for us. We'll see about that. Um, (laughs) Not quite as many folks as were here last week. Um, I just have a couple of thoughts to share with you. Uh, A year and a half ago, I was asked to fill a council seat for someone who was unable to fulfill their obligation. The Good Shepherd Constitution says that a council member cannot succeed themselves, or I would have been happy to stay on. I believe it takes about a year to know what you're doing, and then you're done. Um, Anyway, myself and three others are done. And this is a, a problem for us. The nominating committee has called 63 people. That's not counting the people they talk to while on the treadmill downtown or sitting at a basketball game or running into people in the grocery store. If you've ever been on the nominating committee, you know what that's like. People see you and kind of, they really don't want to talk to you. One person has agreed to be on the council. I have a favorite phrase that I used to hang in my office. The world is run by those who show up. I know when I was asked to be on council, I was less than enthusiastic. Um, We all have reasons, and we really do, and I know they're real. We don't have time. We're bad with budgets. We don't like conflict, those kinds of things. I don't want to lay on guilt. I think Lutherans probably have enough without someone else adding to it. Uh, I just want you to know, in my experience, Monday nights would come and in the beginning I would moan and groan and roll my eyeballs and say, I have to go to council. And it was very frustrating. But over time I found out every single time I went, I smiled a lot, I laughed, I was warmly greeted by a wonderful group of people. I was touched by something that occurred that night. I always came home energized and understanding that everybody has something to offer. There's a Sunday school song that we all know. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. We are the church. Nobody else is going to do it for us. If you'd like to help Good Shepherd by serving on council, you have a week. The election will be next week. The nominating committee, Dan Trepto, Jim Stern, Britt Wagner, and Carl Forderer who I've watched make a lot of phone calls. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Julie. Very appropriate. I would ask that you please stand if you're able for the opening gathering song, number 665, Rise, Shine, You People.
We join together in the confession and forgiveness that you will find on page 94. We will be using the right-hand columns. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now silently confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We will now sing... This is the feast located on page 140 in the front of your hymnal. Continue with the prayer of the day located in your bulletin. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory 
and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We'll now have music provided by the choir, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. invite Diane Lipke up for the reading of scriptures. The first lesson is from Isaiah 62 verses 1 through 5. The people's return to Judah after the exile was marred by economic and political troubles. Nevertheless, the prophet declares, Jerusalem and Judah will be restored. God will rejoice over Jerusalem as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, and the people are called to the celebration. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her indication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married, for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. 
For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. The congregation at Corinth experienced division as people were comparing one another's spiritual gifts, thinking that some to be superior to others. Paul invites this fractured community to trust that God's Holy Spirit has gifted them all perfectly for their mission together. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says that Jesus be cursed and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, and to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. Here ends the lessons. Thank you, Diane. I'd ask that you please stand, if you're able, for the Gospel Acclamation. It's located on page 142 in your worship book. Holy Gospel according to Ju John, the second chapter. Glory On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each one holding 20 or 30 gallons. And Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now, draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. And when the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you, you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Okay, please be seated. Is there um, someone here for a children's message? I would love, to, oh good.
Isn't it great when they just laugh when they come to church and have a good time? That's great. Good morning, guys. We have one girl, so I'm not alone, huh? <laughs> well, today we're talking about um, these, these water jars, and, it, and it's for a wedding. Have any of you ever been to weddings before? Oh, you have. What do you do at weddings? What are some of the things that we do at weddings? What kind of clothes do we wear? What kind of clothes do we wear when we go to weddings? Fancy. 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 Oh, that's fun, isn't it? To get all dressed up. Yeah. And are there maybe cousins or, or brothers or sisters that are there at the wedding too? Yeah. Oh, then we've been to similar weddings. Yeah. Oh, well, somebody else out there wants to come up. <laughs> So when we have weddings, are those sad times or is everybody excited? I'm excited. Oh. Can you tell me some of the weddings that you've been to? What what do you do at a wedding? Celebrate. We celebrate, that's for sure. We celebrate for the bride and for the groom because they're getting what? Married. Married. Oh, I can tell that you have been to weddings. Well, you were. Did you have a good time? And there were lots of people? And maybe you had some cake? Oh, that's a good part, too. Yeah. So, other things at weddings, what do we do? Eat. 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 Okay, very good. But this is a special wedding. This is a wedding that Jesus is at. Would we like to have Jesus at our wedding? Yes. Yeah, I would like that, too. But, um... We, we don't have that opportunity because Jesus isn't here right now in the flesh. He is always here with us. And so what a great thing that is. So when you, when you go to a wedding, what's one thing that you each like to do? What do you like to do at weddings? Uh, ring bear. Ring bear. Have you been a ring bear? Oh, that is fun. And you probably had a fancy suit too, didn't you? Okay. What do you like to do at weddings? Eat. Boy, you're my kind of guy. <laughs> what do you like to do at weddings? Play with my friends. Play with your friends because there can be so many people there and we do have fun. What do you like to do at weddings? Eat. Okay. We are good eaters. Let us pray now as we talk about getting married um, because that might happen to each one of you someday. And um, Jesus was at this wedding, and that would be very special for us. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks that you are with us wherever we go. Today we're talking about weddings and how much fun it is to go to weddings and to celebrate and to be with other people there. I give you thanks for each one of these children that they come to hear the stories of Jesus. Help us each to understand that Jesus is our Savior that he is with us wherever we go and whatever we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming up. I think they could have done the sermon. <laughs> okay. As you might have picked up from um, the children's message, these are different types of what that we might get in the mail sometimes. Invitations to a wedding. Right. And they always come in different flavors, different sizes, different uh, colors. But we know for sure when that comes in the mail, we're going to put it on the refrigerator or wherever it is we put our important things so that we won't forget when that day comes. There are varieties of wedding invitations, as we already talked about. And at those fun celebrations, we see pretty dresses and tuxes like the kids talked about. We also get to eat some cake and some goodies. Weddings 
you see, in Jesus' time, were joyous events just like they are today. Family and friends gather together to celebrate the union of the couple who now are forming a new family, a new home. Much like our receptions, there are speeches and toasts along with an abundant supply of food and wine. These festive celebrations in those days could last up to a whole week. Processions were made first to the bride's home and then to the groom's home. And with the number of guests and the length of time that it took, a family prepares to have plenty of food because they don't want to be embarrassed. But then it happens. Oh my, that wine runs out. This is indeed a disgrace to the family. So whatever are they going to do? Mary, as we know as Jesus' mother, spots what has happened and quickly brings the dilemma before her son Jesus. She's confident that Jesus will be able to handle the situation so as to eliminate any humiliation for the family. As an aside, she suggests to the servants, go and do whatever he tells you. So eventually, as he takes his time, Jesus orders the servants to go around the banquet hall and fill the pots with water now that the wine is gone. They will need something to drink. And these pots are taken to the head table. But then, I think they are a bit surprised because something unusual happens. The water seems to have turned into wine. As that host raises a glass and samples the new pitcher, he announces that this is by far the finest wine that he has ever had. And why did they happen to save this one for the last? Not all present there know the rest of the story, how the wine comes to be. But the servants who follow Jesus' request do know what happened. It is Jesus who has made this fine wine from water. This was Jesus' very first sign that we have in the Gospel of John. At that wedding in Cana, Jesus understood who he was. He realized that the power that he did have was not for him. It was always and only for other people. So it is for us. What we have is always and only for other people. Yes, God does give us gifts, but they are not for us alone. God gives us gifts to share with others, no matter where we are. Likewise, in today's reading from Corinthians, Paul <coughs> tells the people, What you have, folks, is not for you. What you have is for others. So Paul writes this part of his letter to the people at Corinth for one reason. The reason is that the people are acting very selfishly. They know about having the gifts of the Spirit and sharing what they have been given. But instead, they take those gifts to create a hierarchy. You know those kinds of words. My gift is better than yours, they taunt. We can see that this letter is truly written to this community for a reason. They are divided, and they are in need of some teaching and understanding. It's to the point where some who are experiencing the Spirit in highly visible ways make those who are not blessed in the same way feel that they are lacking something in faith. What did they do wrong? So Paul writes 
in his letter to reassure the entire church, all of the people in Corinth, as well as us today. Paul encourages us and tells us that we are to relate to each other as brothers and sisters in Christ, regardless of what gifts we have been given. Then, as we all work together, we can join in building up the whole church. What? You question if you have any gifts? Let me read you this letter that came from Paul. He writes, Dear friends in Christ, I want to talk to you about how the various ways of God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. It's rather complex and unfortunately is often misunderstood, but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. Remember how you were when you didn't even know God and went from one phony God to another, never knowing what you were doing, just doing it because that's what everybody else does. Well, it's different in this life. God wants us to use our intelligence that we've been given to seek to understand as well as we can. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit, Paul continues. God has various expressions of power, and you see these everywhere, wherever you go. And you see, God himself is behind it all. Each person, yes, each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Every one of us gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit and to all kinds of people. The variety is incredible. Sharing God's good news, clear understanding, a simple trust, healing the sick, caring for others, and the list can go on and on. You can easily see how this kind of thing works by looking no further than your very own body. For your body has many parts, limbs and organs, cells, all of those things. But no matter how many parts you can name, you are still one body. And it's exactly the same with Jesus. By means of his one spirit, we all said goodbye to our piecemeal lives. We no longer independently call our own shots. Instead, we enter into a huge, integrated life that is led by Jesus. Paul reminds us that what we have is not for us. And in fact, the diversity of our gifts is fundamental to how the church carries on. If we all had the same gift, our progress in sharing God's word would be very difficult. And the letter is signed by Paul, your brother in faith. Speaking of church, I want you to pull out your bulletin that you probably all received when you came today. All you're going to need is the very first page, so you don't have to turn a lot of pages. Everybody have their bulletin? Read with me our mission statement that is at the very top of that first page. We are called by God to grow, serve, love, care, and worship. Easily said, maybe not so easily done. But I invite you to take your bulletin home and focus just on one area each day when you say your prayers, whether that be morning or bedtime. When we all focus on these teachings each day, we will grow not only personally, 
but we will also strengthen our congregation. In doing this, we can support one another. You see, we do not have to do it all by ourselves, for the Spirit is there to guide us and nudge us in the right direction. Our gifts are given so that we can reach out to others in an unselfish way. You see, we are sharing what really isn't ours at all. It's God's gift to be used for the good of the body of Christ. Our gifts are not something that we can hold on to tightly and say, you can't have that, this is mine. Instead, our gifts become more fully known as they are put to use as a community, such as Good Shepherd. God's Spirit will help us as we work together to spread the joy. Amen. I invite you to stand and pick up your ELW and we will sing together Christ Be Our Light, number 715.
remain standing for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the offering. The offering response will follow, which is, we are an offering located on page 692 in your Lutheran Book of Worship. seated or kneel for the prayers of the church. Called by the Holy Spirit into a relationship with a loving God, we pray for the church, all those in need, and the whole creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all those around the world who spread the good news of Jesus. Today, we especially remember those in our companion synods, Bogota, Colombia, the Central Diocese in Tanzania, along with our partner congregation, Kinambea Lutheran, as well as missionaries, the Lofstroms. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Continue to pour your steadfast love upon the church, O God, so that we may share your abundant grace with the whole world. Today we give thanks for those who spread your word, including all churches in Wells, as well as Grand Meadow Lutheran in Grand Meadow, East Freeborn Lutheran in Albert Lee, Goal Lutheran in Kenyon, and Community Lutheran in Geneva. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You lavish care on all people, O God. Help leaders to act in ways that spread your peace to all the earth. Today we are especially mindful of those who are serving in the military, including J.B. Wilner, Jared Detloff, Danielle Hipper, Jared Billings, Alex Raymaker, Mitch Meyer, Joshua Kaufman, Michael Kaufman, Joshua Hansen, Logan Maticola, Brandon Raisler, Kevin Stern, Eric Trepto, Mike Mall, Keith Lateral, and any who you may name on your own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Spirit gives gifts to each one of us, O God. Let us use our gifts to care for all who suffer, the homeless, the unemployed, those who are ill or those who are in pain. Today we especially remember Shannon Royce, Stu Fullerton, Bill Niebuhr, Sabrina Bushlock, Jan Helfritz, John Musser, Caroline Tachi, David Talamatez, Arnold Carlson, and any of those that you may name silently in your hearts. Bring them also hope and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Use this Good Shepherd congregation, O God, helping us to serve you in whatever way we are called. Help us to share your love with a thirsty world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we remember the family of Gary Salisbury as they all mourn his loss. We give you thanks for the memories he leaves with us. Sustain us all in the gift of baptism as we gather with all your saints from every time and place to share new wine around one table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your loving hands, gracious God, we place ourselves in our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in your mercy, mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper Jesus took the cup 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God for the good of the world. You may be seated and you will be ushered forward by the um, ushers. When you come forward, if you prefer grape juice rather than wine, please pick up one of the small glasses that you will find in front of the silver trays. Come for all is ready.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand for God's benediction. The Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord's face shines on you and is gracious to you. The Lord looks upon you with favor and grants you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be sure to come down into the social hall following the service for the review of the annual report and see the prepared budget for the coming year to be prepared for our annual meeting next week. Our sending song is sent forth by God's blessing, number 547 in your hymnal.